Welcome to the Buckingham Center for Facial Plastic Surgery video education series. In previous videos, we've talked about our philosophy regarding facial aging as it relates to gravitational changes, volume loss, and skin. In more detail, we've broken down the surgical procedures related to elevating tissues affected by gravity as well as volume replacement through fat transfer and the use of fillers. In this video, we're going to focus on the skin. The skin undergoes many changes relating to aging that manifest themselves as pigmentation alterations, wrinkles, loss of elasticity, vascular changes, etc. There's modalities that are available to target many of the changes related to aging and skin, and those revolve around different surgical and non-surgical modalities, but also skin care. Unlike some of our gravitational procedures, such as a facelift or volume replacement that can last for years and years, skin is something that is affected by ongoing sun damage and aging more than anything else. And so the treatments that you use have to be coupled with ongoing skin care to maximize the results. So when somebody comes in to talk to me about skin, the first thing we talk about is skin care. There are several good skincare lines out there, but the one that we prefer is referred to as PCA Skin. I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail about what is in PCA Skincare because that really encompasses another video that we're going to do on a different occasion. But s say it that we would have you get into a cleanser, something like a retinol, which helps with dermal thickening and epidermal turnover, possibly something for pigment, eye creams, etc., that will really help to boost the skin and get it in good shape. For a procedure and then maintain the skin after that procedure. So deciding on what we're going to do for skin care very much depends upon what sort of downtime or what sort of other procedures the patient may be doing. Sometimes all they need is to just change their skin care and with a little patience they'll see enough improvement in their skin that the patient will be happy with that. But if that's not the case then we talk about other things that can be done to do that and I typically talk about those in escalating scale of invasiveness and recovery. So for the person who's looking for the least invasive procedure, least amount of downtime, but is patient for results, we talk about just doing some light chemical peels, again, through the PCA skincare line. These are peels that my nurse will do in the office and typically have about one and a half to two days of some redness and light peeling, depending upon the intensity of the peel. And there's many peels that can be done that can be targeted towards different skin conditions. And again, that is something that can use a little more detail in another video. Beyond doing the PCA skin care peels, we move into things like Fraxel laser and resurfacing. The Fraxel laser is an erbium laser, which is a wavelength that's targeted at water, but it's fractionated. So unlike older erbium lasers that remove the entire outer layer of the skin in one pass, a fractionated laser delivers micro spots of erbium lasers that leave untreated skin in between. It's a procedure that takes place in the office. We put an ointment on the face that numbs the skin for about an hour, sometimes supplemented with some narcotic pain medication for those individuals who need that, and then the procedure takes about 30 minutes. The recovery time from that is about five days in total, but in females, they can wear makeup right away and need to wear sunscreen right away, and so that can decrease the recovery. So really, you're looking at about two days of facial swelling and an additional three days of some facial redness and some roughness to the skin that again can be covered up with makeup. This is a series of treatments that are done at four to six week intervals and depending on the skin condition, they'll typically do four to six treatments and then perhaps supplement those maybe once every six months with an additional treatment just to upkeep the skin. So that's the next level beyond just doing some light chemical peels. Beyond that, we move into surgeon's strength peels and for that I use a solution of Jesner's and 35% trichloroacetic acid. Now this is the type of peel that needs to be done under anesthesia and so typically we're doing these peels in conjunction with facelifting procedures, blepharoplasties, fat transfers, things that require an IV sedation. It's not common for people to choose to do a deep chemical peel as a standalone procedure. However, on occasion some people will choose to do that. This is a real surgical procedure even though there's no cutting involved in that, again, it requires an anesthetic and it requires a real 10 days of downtime. During that 10 days, you're cleansing your face with a Cetaphil cleanser and applying Aquaphor ointment 24 hours a day to your skin. 
It's referred to as a peel because initially the solution is just applied to the face, which penetrates to a certain depth and gets rid of the outer damaged skin, the skin that has the most damage from being exposed to the sun and down into the upper layers of the dermis. That outer skin layer, however, stays intact for about four to five days while the new skin buds are slowly pushing it up from below and then finally the skin will peel off, which is exactly why the procedure gets its name as a peel. And so literally on about day five, the outer layers of the skin just peel off in sheets, leaving fresh new skin underneath. Now the skin is very fragile and so you need to continue to wear ointment for about another five days after that full 10 day period where then we switch you from an ointment to a heavy moisturizer. Again, we use a Cetaphil moisturizer and you continue that out to day 14. At day 14, we allow our patients to get into makeup. However, it has to be a talc-free, mineral-based makeup, and we provide that for our patients. So that is the most aggressive procedure that we will do for skin resurfacing, with the exception of certain individuals who have lighter skin tones and have severe wrinkles around their mouth or perioral lines that we can go in and we might do something called dermabrasion, which is a little bit more aggressive than the peel even, and involves literally a sanding procedure to remove the outer layers of the skin and allow those to heal in. That's a very aggressive procedure and it does carry some risk of scarring and is not utilized in individuals with darker skin types because there is a real risk of pigmentation loss from that procedure. But for those individuals who are willing and really desire to undergo the most aggressive procedure for those perioral lines, that's a procedure that we offer for them. Once any of these kick-starting procedures are done, again, we go back to our ongoing skin care including aggressive sun protection. Not that you can't be out in the sun, that's a myth from these inter invasive chemical peels and laser treatments that you can no longer be in the sun, that's just a fallacy. The point is, is that if you go in the sun, you're gonna start inducing increased skin damage from sun exposure again, that's gonna limit your results. And so it's not that you can't be in the sun, you just need to protect your skin from the sun with sunscreen and hats where appropriate. Then we utilize ongoing skin care to keep the skin and maintain its balance, texture, tone, evenness and coloration, and perhaps down the road add other things in again to kind of jump start and maintain that. Now there's certain conditions that aren't well treated with these procedures that I've mentioned. The ones that we've mentioned are primarily targeted towards pigmentation and wrinkles. There are other conditions that come on with skin aging like rosacea or vascularity, which basically rosacea is a condition that sometimes has acne associated with it, so you have little white pustules, um, but most of the time it's just related with a vascular change to the skin. It typically worsens with heat, exercise, drinking of red wine, those things, and what it leads to is a flushing or a red coloration of the cheeks, chin, and forehead. There are some topical medications that be, can, can be utilized to help with rosacea, although oftentimes these are not very effective, and so we move on and do th things to help with that, which mostly consists of the use of a vascular laser. You can use photofacial as well for redness. However, it's a series of treatments um, that does work very well. We prefer to use what's called a pulse dye laser, which is targeted directly towards the vasculature and is typically a one-time treatment. The downside to a pulse dye laser is, however, it does leave purple, what we call purpura, which is areas where the blood vessels have been coagulated or, or dried up by the laser, and it takes about seven to 10 days for those to go away. So again, if somebody can't tolerate the downtime, then we can offer them a photofacial treatment. Um, however, if they can tolerate the downtime, the pulse dye laser is a very effective means to reduce that vascularity to the skin. So I hope that's been helpful in understanding the procedures that are associated with getting your skin in good condition and the importance of sun protection and ongoing skin care to maintain those results once a procedure has been performed.